Welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Anya and we're here for another episode of The Frag Files. Today we're going to focus on a really exciting variant of Goni Opera, the Glitter Goni. So today we don't have just one colour of glitter goni opera, there are three. Let's check out some of the tools we're going to use to frag this goni. This doesn't really get too complicated with goni opera, so our tool set is simply some coral snips, some nice clean disposable stainless steel scalpels, we're going to use a, a baster, some larger frag plugs, some with stems, and some rock shapes with a flatter base, CG coral glue, Coral RX dip. We're soaking those frag plugs. We've got two buckets, one for the dip, one for the bath, and a towel. So the first thing we're going to prepare is the coral dips. We're going to use Coral RX initially to remove any potential pests that may become further exposed as we cut away from the coral base. So get that done. And also the Seachem iodine base dip to assist with regenerating the tissue of the area that we're actually going to cut once we've done the fragging. So we'll use this goni opera, which is a wild piece of purple and green glitter goni. We'll do that one first. As you can see, this colony has actually grown onto an old skeleton. It has a couple of holes we have cleaned it up as best as possible in the many months that we've been hoarding it here in the prop room, growing out. And now it's definitely time to share this color. So I get my coral snips, clean them up. And what you can see here is because it's, the skeleton of Goni Opera is actually quite hollow and brittle, cutting it does not require very much energy, which is why I tend not to use or feel that it's really needed to use power tools for this one. Although you do obviously get really nice clean cuts with the power tools. And all I'm really trying to achieve here is just removing as much ocean off the coral as possible. The nature of the way that Goniopera colonies grow is encrusting tissue. So if you maintain a very high amount of skeleton, you're going to have to wait a very long time to get that aquaculture growth to go downwards until it hits the porcelain. So there's this kind of a playoff between, you know, cutting away as much as you can without actually hindering the size of the frags or turning it into a kind of like a crushed up mess of shards. A bit of experience does tend to help assess where to kind of stop. Um, with Glinogori Opera being such a rare, hardly ever encountered colour variant of Goni Opera, I tend to go a little conservative and not really cut it too small until I'm certain. So I'm just dipping in the Coral RX 
just for a few seconds. It's very clear that there are no pests present, which is nice to see. Oh, look, there is a little hole there, though. It's always better to be safe than sorry in this case. And I can see here I've got some really nice pieces to work with with this colony. Our customers are going to be spoiled for choice once these grow out because I can't remember the last time we had three colours of Glittergony on offer. I first begin by taking cuts in what I would call the easiest positioning available. It doesn't really phase me if I'm cutting through a polyp directly because it's quite inevitable and experience has shown me that it really doesn't matter and they do heal very well. The one bit of advice I can give here though is when you come across a piece that seems a little bit bumpy or thick or harder to cut through, just leave it as a big hole and utilize that as your mother colony for the future. It's just a little bit of an investment, just in case some of these don't work. Though I have to admit, I've never actually had ill success with fragging Goni Opera this way. So the first color is ready to go. Pop them in the water and get onto the second one. The Goniopera is in this ball shape, like the commonly collected Goniopera stokesii often is. Say it's not a glitagoni. It can be a little bit harder to find a place to start. So first thing, you want to get that flat plane, just cut right through and then work on it this way. Create as much flat base as possible. Don't forget the dip. And our final colour. This one is a never before released colour. We have had this colony for nearly 12 months now, so I'm very excited. Um, although Glitter Goni Opera tends to be available in, in strands of purples and greens, once, once we had pink, and I've even seen a red and yellow getting photographed online, so I do know it exists. So as always, we've pre-soaked all our porcelain tiles. This enables any trapped air bubbles to be completely gone for the gluing process. And I've also added a couple of larger tiles here for the mother colonies. So they've got a bit of space to grow out for the next time we're fragging. So as I'm placing these down, I just wanted to talk briefly about caring for Goni Opera. So these corals are reputed to be on the spectrum of difficult uh, for more advanced hobbyists and over the years, um, over the 20 years that I've worked in the industry, the spiels that we have talked about regarding their care have certainly changed. So be that because we understand more these days about feeding the importance of water chemistry, monitoring, uh, the onset of some of the aquarium technologies, we, we just seem to know more. There really is a lot of evidence that suggests that just like other corals in the industry, the lifespan of Goniopera should be indefinite. 
and success tends to be attributable to providing appropriate food sources. These Goniopera, there are 29 species out there in the world and fortunately here at Galleria Aquatica we're actually able to communicate with the collectors that are, are down on the front line diving for these pieces and it's a bit of a fallacy that they live on sandy bottom substrates. A lot of these goni are actually collected between 5 and 25 meters deep and yes they are found in highly turbid environments but also in quite clear environments and sometimes people misunderstand the word turbid for poor water quality um, I think that term should be more correlated with the, the necessity to actively feed or target feed your goni and also while on that point they really should be treated more so like an SPS coral with really long polyps versus an LPS coral. So lighting wise, medium to subdued lighting seems to be appropriate. They do great in blue light. Flow, they tend to have more polyp extension if you don't blast them too much. They look a little bit more attractive like a, a set of fireworks. And just when I'm seeing the opportunity to get one more frag, I'm just cutting them real quick because these really are in quite high demand in store. We like to use Gonio Power from TLF, which has been invented by Justin Credible, actually a friend of mine. And though any powdered coral food target fed, you can use Julian's thing or a turkey baster, um, any powdered coral food will be appropriate. That Gonio Power is specifically formulated in a size grade high in manganese and iron, which under extensive research has been made especially for future success with growth of Goniopera in particular. So I highly recommend it. So finally, I'm up to just setting the glue. Pouring water from top down tends to prevent any excessive glue from coming back up, which can occur if you plunge your frags first. So I'm using just a really cheap baster here to ensure that the glue, <laughs> the water travels downward into the tub. And then I'm gonna just pop them really quickly in the iodine base dip to heal any cuts or prevent any potential infection before they go back in our propagation system to grow out and be shared with fellow reefers. So as you can see here, we've got plenty of glitter goni frags ready here to cook up in our prop room for our fellow reefing community. Thank you so much for joining me for today's episode of The Frag Files. I hope I've helped you learn something about goni opera today. I'm Anya and happy reefing. So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy and keep on reefing.